Hi, Rick Harsh, Corona Sums that books. Um, dog barking in the distance. Somewhere a dog barked. Um, or as Cormac McCarthy would say, not even a dog barked him down that lonesome road or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm here to talk about uh, why it's so hard to read this book. Um, because I'm reading, uh, I, I can answer it right away, because I'm reading too many other books. And, uh, you know, I, with with Gaza going, uh, you know, going dirty, uh, the Israelis, you know, are doing this. They're uh, kill anything that moves. This I, I ordered this before Gaza broke out. This is... Um, get me caught up on, on the latest scholarship ship on uh, Vietnam, where, you know, we, we find out, uh, I knew this already, but I didn't read about it in uh, um, book form. I, I read about it in various articles that uh, there was a meal a day um, in, in Vietnam, basically. Um, it was a policy and uh, it was, um, well, there's, yeah, read this kill anything that moves. I haven't. I'm on page uh, 50. I might have to go back and start over. It's been over a month. Uh, so Gaza started. I, I, I got a book just to catch up on, and I've read quite a bit uh, about um, uh, Zionism and uh, Zionist history, enough to know um, that the massacres um, started uh, uh, before uh, Israel was a state, and uh, um, and they were perpetrated by Israelis or proto-Israelis. So I got Gaza, um, an inquest into its martyrdom by Norman Finkelstein. But I also got another book just to kind of catch me up. This one I got just because it's Finkelstein, and I've not read any of his books. Um, but he's the one uh, most trustworthy scholar on the topic. So. Uh, all that is going on, and, and it's really thrown me out of my reading, uh, as has uh, the uh, um, hours that I've been forced to keep, and uh, um, various other things. But um, it's given me plenty of time to think about Prison Mars, and that's good because uh, um, that's Lauren Fairbanks. Uh, that's not Lauren. That might be Lauren Fairbanks. I don't know, but she wrote the book, Prison Mars. And um, I think I, I've read here what uh, um, Stephen Moore says, but it's worth repeating. Uh, Prepare yourself for the rant of a lifetime, the octogenarian narrator warns early in this hilariously bizarre novel. A psycho bitch mother's confession wrapped in a sci-fi eco-fiction package. As Earth undergoes environmental cleansing, the nameless narrator reviews her toxic relationship with her two daughters, in three Molly Bloomish monologues that are by terms funny and disgusting. The daughters get their own section, as does a future minion of the Mars subterfuge. Uh-oh, subterfuge. The language brings the fun in. Mommy Dearest sounds off like a wisecracking dame in a noir film, breezy, abrupt, insouciant. With hints of the late styles of Beckett and Brossard, maybe notes of Gertrude Stein, Celine's machine gun blasts, some Sorrentino, a fave of the narrators, and Burroughs. The result is a sardonic novel that suggests environmental improvements will never be protection enough against the flawed humans who inhabit the planet. Now, it's worth reading something like that because um, it also helps to um, introduce the, the book and, and guide you through the reading. Um, it's so... Uh, it's such a good first-person novel that um, you you can get caught up in the um, in the voice and um, the hilarity of it, and get lost in in terms of the cohesion of the novel. And uh, I'm finding that out. Uh, I'm on page ninety, and uh, you know she. She's uh, she's so fun to listen to. She's a uh, you know you could say that she's akin to a maybe the best of Philip Roth, if not um, uh, better. 
Um, I, I would say better, actually. Um, but, you know, I'm just thinking of, you know, people who <coughs> were first person um, uh, experts. I mean, that's how Philip Roth wrote so fast uh, and so much. Because once you get in a voice, um, it's uh, writing is like talking. Um, but in certain cases, it's a little more complicated. And, and uh, I think in this case it is. Um, I Wrapped in a sci-fi eco package or whatever he said, uh, uh, sci-fi eco fiction package. Um, you know, I'm not a sci-fi eco fiction type of guy. But, you know, and, and when you have a voice like this, it doesn't matter. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what does matter is why people, more and more of them, are writing these, uh, futuristic books. Um, I just noticed that, um, this, that I just read, um, the first section, I'm almost done, uh, it, it occurs in 2015. The next one is 2115. That'll be an interesting, um, switch. Well, th this, this old broad, uh, apparently she's talking to a nurse, um, who apparently sleeps, dozes on her, and, uh, anyway, let me, let me give a shot at reading this. It, it's not easy because there's a cadence, and, um, well, she helped him to see the world, but then he took off in the world. She's speaking of her daughter. Fly, butterfly, away from her. She uses a lot of short sentences. Status quo left no room for the flailing likes of her. No one's cup of tea. Set him free. After his cheating, she couldn't stand him to the point of hatred. He wasn't exactly the plan. He was no one's plan. Without a backup plan. No replacement. Yes, I'm talking to you, nurse. Look and be aware of what's beyond the big tree standing in front of you, blocking your vision. There is a forest with dead trees. <clears throat> there must be, in the midst of the forest, a tree for you. My analogies get repetitive, and by the way, analogies stink. I get lost in them, lost in the wo words, woods. Better to shut up, doze. He strongly suggested she get her friends to instruct her on how to do a hand job, a blow job. His blow job. She wasn't about to ask anyone. Them. Embarrassing. Assuming they know embarrassing. Assuming he wants to know what they know. Embarrassing. Did they even know how to give a hand job or a blow job? Or was it rumors in the seventh level of hell? Spread by football teams, track teams, golf teams in the sixth realm of hell, where they live and voice women's sexual skills in the penumbra and abject poverty of male skills. Women into whores and men into gods. A dearth of male skills discussion for another day. He was all ears. No. And a resounding big fat no. Open up the discussion to male skills. Flatness. Quiet. Rumors tend to be the male strong point. It is written. Sad. Make me come, asshole. Yours is easy all hanging out there where you can do it yourself. Hardly need me. Who's the slut now? You boring pig. Who's the fucking slut now? Rumors, lies, girls, bad reputations, extreme, in the boy department. The high school sports department. False male fantasies spread through the school like infantile wildfire. Who gives a shit what those filthy animals think? Think. Reputation. Filthy animals. Ironies. What if the girl who fucked him knew even less than Morticia? <laughs> and under the guise of the sexually experienced breast-heavy woman. What if the world-renowned whore actually knew less than the world-renowned prude? Daughter's the prude. Ironies. There's a pretty fucked-up twist for you. Have at it, indeed. Couldn't exactly Google handjob lessons back then. A conundrum. Wait. Excuse me a sec. I must respond to an all-encompassing all -encompassing update on my phone. If you only had a hand job from her, it might have saved you a trip to the doctor and a needle through the penis. The daughter made the guy, uh, when she took, her back, took him back, made him go get tests for venereal matters. 
Blood commingling. Double ouch. Fuckface. Rumination station. Morticia was never going to make money. Advertised herself that way. Sold herself. Never the money maker per se. Aversion to it. Filthy lucre. He grew towards money. Firstborn. Desirous. Status quo guy. Run. That away. She wasn't growing in any particular direction. Down. Stagnating. Straight line. Up and down on that line depending on the day. That's when she fell off into chaotic ruin. Happens to the best of us. So, that might or might not have given you an idea of how...